I was born in a Baha'i family, so both my parents were Baha'is. Uh, so it's part of the way I grew up. It's part of uh, the way I see the world. I was raised with the uh, with the idea that um, that we're all part of the human family, and we have a lot of diversity in the human family, and we have the same Creator. And it all made sense to me. My parents wanted me to learn from a uh, different faith to understand that actually all faiths come from God. So uh, in school, uh, where I grew up in Alsas, Alsas is has been a lot divided between Protestant and Catholic. And uh, I, uh, schools in France are non-religious, the state schools. But Alsace is a bit different compared to other schools in France. There's uh, the church has more uh, uh, freedom to inf to to also express itself. I mean, it, it's not like church doesn't have freedom in other parts of France, but Alsace has a special statutes, so uh, you do get option to get religion classes in school. You can either choose religion class or ethics. I mean, it was at that time when I was a child. So um, I had et class of ethics, and then I also went to the Catholic classes in school, and then later on I went to the Protestant. So I was exposed to different views. Uh, that was part of the schooling. I think my parents encouraged me to do that so that I could learn from other faiths as well. And my best friend from uh, childhood was the son of a a Protestant minister, so I was also quite closely exposed to that with uh, uh, being a friend of him and they, they were very open also to other faiths so I grew up with this idea that uh, we're all part of human family, it was part of my identity and also it's part of the family because my I mean the diversity is in our family because my mother is half Swiss, half French and my father is half Iranian, half Basque, France, but from the Basque side. So these identities are very close, uh, very important in 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 my uh, in my family. The fact that they have strong identities, but they are diverse at the same time. So uh, coming back to the question of the Baha'i faith, for me, uh, uh, that's how I grew up. And one important principle in the Baha'i faith is personal research of the truth that you're not born as a Baha'i you discover it as you grow you discover what you do your own research your own, own discovery and it's not genetic it's the faith is something personal something you believe in if you believe in it and you want to express that faith then you're a Baha'i and that's how I felt actually you can't declare yourself as a Baha'i before you're 15 but from the time you're 15, you're considered uh, to have the maturity to, uh, to decide about your own faith. You can also decide to wait, not to say anything. You can, but I, when I was 15, I wanted to, to declare that I'm Baha'i. I felt like it was important. So I, I told my parents, you know, I'm a Baha'i. And, uh, and also I wanted to, not just to say the faith, I wanted to um to also uh f to see what i could do about it also it was important for me it wasn't just a moment it's a process and uh it grew as i as i develop as i grew as a child so because as i said i grew up in the baha'i family it was part of me it was normal like identity it's just uh, uh i knew that uh, you can declare yourself when you're 15 you can say, you know, decide, you said, I'm a Baha'i. Like it's the, fa the fact that you, so I knew it before and I was waiting for that moment, 15, to say, okay, I didn't do it in public. I just told my parents and it was a normal for me. Like uh, I see more, I see it more as a process rather than a moment that just came in. It's not like a revelation. I think it's more like a learning process, which is strengthening with the time so um, now as I uh, mature get uh, you know age and get older and 
uh, became a parent and have you know my own son now is an adult so um, I think with this my daughter also becoming an adult also is an adult and uh, the notion of faith is strengthening I think uh, it's not the same I can say the faith that I have now is the same as the one I had when I was 15 but it's strengthened it's, it's deeper I think it's consolidated with reflection and with uh, reasoning I believe very strongly that faith is a combination of, of uh, uh, feelings emotions but also reflection and reasoning for me it's important that it has to make sense also I, I studied science and and uh, the scientific methodology to get access to knowledge and to understanding for me it's equally can be equally used also for faith it has to go hand in hand it's also a Baha'i principle to have that uh, religion and science should go together and uh, uh, reason and uh, and spirituality should go together as well so that's how I feel it even stronger now and then when I look at the needs of society uh, around the world I think that uh, this even deepened my faith uh, my faith in humans you know faith in not just faith in God but especially in humans because you can say I believe in I, I have faith in God of course God is you know if it's the creator uh, but we need to have faith in humans as well if we want to achieve something as human society if I only believe in God and not in humans what can I do with humans basically I can say they're not worth it only God is then why shall I put effort then but if I do believe in humans, in the potential and the capacity of human beings, then I'm ready to put an effort because I know there's something worth it. In fact, I do have belief, I do have faith in the whole world of creation. For me, it's the question of uh, faith and also is connected with uh, respect. 20 years ago we decided to come to Bosnia we were living in Holland and um, it was a choice for us to uh, uh, different reasons to uh, to do something maybe more meaningful in the sense that more uh, in, engage with society and also the uh, considering the needs of society uh, Bosnia was just after the war and um, in the very uh, you know after going through the war with all the consequences you can imagine we were both of us my wife and myself were doing research at university and we we didn't feel like we would continue doing research we wanted to be more the thing with uh, university research can tend to be very separated from society and you are on your ivory tower and you can be a bit it's uh, fascinating interesting intellectually but Sometimes you feel like uh, maybe not enough involved uh, with people and working more. I used to work with plants and, and you know, you're in the lab and uh, <coughs> with bacteria and so on. So it was an idea also to be more involved and uh, there was a need for uh, to help build Baha'i communities also in Bosnia. So it was an op for us it was a wish we came here as a volunteer to help. And also to see how we can contribute to help, uh, which is more about learning rather than we don't really know what we contribute, but we've been learning a lot. Uh, being in a different place, we're also looking for adventure because we're very curious. And so for me, it was a wish also to uh, discover a new place and yeah. We came just for a month or two and then uh, we realized we like it so uh, then a few months later we came to settle in but we came with a few suitcases, and now you realize how much stuff we have so we just came with four suitcases here <laughs> and we didn't know how long we would stay because we had just savings for a few months but uh, somehow it turned out that we got the opportunity to stay longer and after 
I uh, work with volunteer. My wife continue working uh, uh, with university from a distance so we could stay longer. And then I started uh, working uh, within a year for the UN on uh, education project for the youth. It was a youth confidence building project for the UN, really helping youth uh, uh, build their confidence and try to restart the life after the war where they were, were going through the war as a youth. Uh, it was quite hard. I, we could say it's really a sacrifice generation because they, um, that's the time they were supposed to start studying and the war broke out and many of them actually never studied afterwards. Uh, they, uh, those who were clever, they, you know, all of the new languages, English, they would translate and they would do other things. Yeah, so, um, it's inspired by our faith because uh, having faith, like I said, having faith in human beings, having faith in the capacity of uh, humans to do the good, for me it's enough to, to believe it's possible. And uh, uh, I guess it's a contribution, but you know, you never know what's your, your share of contribution, what's the, the people themselves. and. Uh, but I can see, I know some of the youth we wor I worked with 20 years ago, I still have contact with them. Some of them are doing well. I mean, you know, building, just having a family and children and having a normal life, I consider that already as, as a major achievement, you know, after going through the war and so on. So some of them uh, are really struggling even now, either psychologically or, or mentally or, or physically. It's a struggle, it's a struggle. And some of them, you know, became even stronger because of the war, because they went through the hardship. But it depends on the individuals and every situation is different. But uh, anyway, for me, it was uh, a lot of learning and uh, uh, I didn't understand those colleagues of mine when I said I'm leaving, um, going to Bosnia. And they said, what, you're leaving your scientific career? What are you doing? You're quitting science? And I said, I'm, not, I'm never going to quit science. There's no, why should I quit science? Science is part of my life. You know, in the same way as faith is part of my life. Uh, everything I do, I reflect on, is also based on scientific reasoning, understanding. And uh, so I moved into really helping uh, into education. And I'm still, actually, I've been involved with education and still the case now. 20 years ago was very few buildings that that were not touched by the war I mean it was like everything very rarely you could find and build this a building that didn't have any any trace so now it's the other way around now you have to look for buildings that are not I mean you see a lot of them but uh, compared to how it was this neighborhood here was completely devastated it was just close to the front line politically there's a lot of tension between political leaders who are connected with the religion. So there's a lot of tension politically uh, as a consequence from the war, of course. But on one hand, yes, there's a tension. But on the other hand, people are quite tolerant to each other. They know each other and that this has been for centuries here. So uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina has a chance to have this, this mixed, as you say, of uh, Christian faith and uh, um, yeah, Muslim and, and Jewish. This gives them opportunity to have actually more understanding. On one hand, there is still uh, strong prejudice and tension. On the other hand, there's also uh, more tolerance and uh, respect for other groups. Or even, you know, many people say, you know, I look at the person as a person. I don't, I don't really mind who is the faith. What's important is the behavior and the attitude. Yeah. So there's just a comment to that. But also, uh, coming to your question, um, the view of the Baha'i faith on, on this religion diversity, the core message of the Baha'i faith, which is also really, I think this, this will answer the question, is that um, in reality, the founder of the Baha'i faith, Baha'u'llah, said, this is time now for all religion to unite, because he said, in reality, it's only one common faith. All religion are connected from the same creator. So this is the, the, the Baha'i vision on, um, on religion. What is the true religion? 
what is the true meaning of religion? If you look at the root, uh, the Latin root, religare, means connect. And if it doesn't connect people together, it's not religion anymore. So if religion, also uh, we have in the Baha'i writings, if religion is a source of division and hatred and war, there should not be religion then. Religion should be a cause of unity and so that's not, that's not religion anymore if it's dividing. In other words, if you look at the war here, the last war, which was between Serbs, Kat, um, uh, Croats, Muslims, uh, was influenced by the, uh, their uh, religion beliefs but this was more manipula political manipulation rather than a religious war. The large majority of people did not want any of this war. It was the political leaders who were actually dividing and partitioning and sharing their power, which they are still doing now. So it wasn't really... And, uh, but on the other hand, at the same time, uh, religious prejudice can be very strong and could also lead to hatred and division, as we have seen in the past. I mean, with the Crusaders in Europe, and this is not a new... This is a misunderstanding from the core religion teachings. If you look at the teachings of, of, of the Christ, it's also about loving your brother, your neighbors, sharing your love and your uh, respect for others. So uh, the important thing of religion, also in the Baha'i teaching, is not so much what you say, but rather what you do. How, how do you show uh, loving kindness to all, all humans that you meet? How do you connect with humanity, you know, human beings? It's actually more important even than say, what is your faith? In which God do you believe in? How many God are they? What's happening even now? I mean, you still you still see uh, a lot of uh, inhuman injustice. Yes, a lot of injustice and sufferings caused by humanity, caused by humans. Um, yes, definitely. This is this is one of the um, challenges of humanity or the paradox of the creation, human creation, that we are created God gave us this this uh, present you can see this privilege this this privilege that we do have the choice to obey to follow divine laws or not to follow them and in every religion teaching said if you follow my guidance it will be for your benefit but if you don't then you create problem with for yourself and not just humanity the resources that are available for us humans. So um, what makes me keep my faith in humans is, is maybe not the bad news that I see because definitely this is horrifying what we see. I mean, the mistreatments of uh, humans against humans, all the injustices, but also the lack of respect for uh, the world of creation, for, for nature and the environment and uh, the natural environment. Uh, that we are destroying our own resources, so we will be left with very little left. So we are basically digging our own grave. If you don't believe in, in, in our potential to uh, save ourselves with the help of God, then, uh, then of course we can become very uh, hopeless. But uh, I still have a strong hope and faith in, in humans because for me it's enough to see one individual doing good thing and sacrificing its own time and energy or for, uh, for the benefit of others. And you see so many examples throughout history of those people who have been, you know, uh, putting their lives, even sometimes sacrificing their own life for the benefit of others, for the sake of humanity. It's enough for me to, to believe in the um, potential of humanity. The question is the number, of course. The m we need to be more people aware and, and doing 
like you say, good things for humanity, the capacity to do it and to show it's possible, not just to talk about it, but really go into action. And so you have example of people who do spend their time and energy and trying to help. And thanks to the, all these efforts, there are many places around the world where we live in peace, where people are living a normal life and enjoying, and that's thanks to the effort of those who put effort in it. It doesn't come, peace comes with a price. Peace comes with effort and energy and sacrifice. No effort, no energy, then, of course, then you run into troubles. The teachings, I think the f having faith helps a lot, but we can also share it with others and share that hope and that capacity to save ourselves. And, and I believe strongly, also not just because uh, some individuals, but also it's a promise. It's a promise that uh, was given by every religion teaching that uh, peace will come on earth and then uh, we'll have a more, uh, much better, uh, we are reaching a, a better stage of our civilization. The Baha'i teachings tell, tell us that, um, that we'll have a world uh, civilization. This is the birth of a new civilization. So the teachings of Baha'u'llah, since the Baha'i revelation in the 19th century, he said humanity is now building up a stage for a world civilization. For the first time in the history of humanity, uh, humanity will be able now to build a world civilization. All previous civilizations were local, even some of them, even though some of them became quite large, but uh, no, um, no single empire managed to, to uh, cover the whole, the entire planet. So it's not the idea to, meal, to make a new empire that will control everyone, rather to to learn to build a harmonious world civilization. We don't really know exactly what it will be because we haven't done it before. So it's completely new for humanity. Uh, but having this vision, for me, is really helping a lot, uh, consolidating that hope and belief in humans and in our common future. There is a future, the future we want, and the UN actually has written that vision you can see the UN, what is the future we want? And every head of state signed that. And it's actually outlined uh, with the Sustainable Development Goals for 2030, which is quite soon. I mean, in human history, it's like tomorrow. I mean, we just have uh, 10 years to go now. Uh, but these goals are ambitious. And I think they, they follow somehow the Baha'i vision that was outlined in the 19th century of what kind of world we want to build. And it's not enough to sign a document within head of states. This has to be worked out at the local level as well. I mean, in order to achieve these goals, we need to learn to work at the local level, at the national level, at the international level. And it is happening. It is happening even though there are many obstacles and there are many forces going in the opposite direction. So it's not a smooth ride for sure. But I believe that we're going to achieve it. It, it might, it might, uh, we might need more struggle, more uh, uh, going through more challenges in order to achieve that. But this is the, the way I understand the Baha'i vision is that uh, humanity can be compared as a child in the Baha'i teaching, it says. Uh, and um, uh, the, uh, with the history of humanity, which you, you can even go back to a few thousand years ago and even even uh, more, um, has been going through the childhood. And, and we are now coming into the age of maturity. But before we reach the age of maturity, you have to go through uh, adolescence, puberty. And these are difficult times. They're very challenging times. We know with ups and downs, and one day you're an adult, next day you're a child again. And so you feel like nothing is changing. And then even as an individual, when you go through uh, that age uh, time, you don't really believe in yourself and you don't think it's possible that what kind of adult are you going to be. 
So that would be the, the stage of humanity now, that we are in that stage where we don't really believe in what we can do and we are even uh, damaging ourselves and the planet. But we will go through that time and we will reach the stage of maturity, which is the promise of our, you can say our mission of, you know, why are we on this earth? You know, many people who, who, um, who look at the destruction we're doing, they said, what are we doing? What, what are we doing on this planet? Are we just here to destroy it and ourselves? So I think these are important questions. I think it doesn't make sense for me. There has to be something else. Otherwise, it's a dead end. So I really believe strongly in this uh, uh, vision. And I think we need to share that vision. Because sharing that vision is about the future we want. And even if you are not there yet, if you believe in it, then you start working on it. For me, this is part of the faith. It's also believing in what we can do as humanity. As a person, you can also say, I have faith in you. I have faith in myself, in my capacity. But we need also to have faith in our humanity, like I said. And also faith in God, because uh, our Creator, God, why would He le let us completely down? Also, it doesn't make sense to me. I think there is at some point, uh, He gives us, you know, a little bit like, um, like when you, you get your own child, you know, you want your child to learn to walk. You can, uh, you can, you have, you can actually let him. You, there are two extremes. One extreme would be to let the child, you know, just by itself without any help at all, and he will probably not survive because he is not able to feed himself. The other extreme would be just to hold the child with you and take extra care, so he is not injured by anything, anyone. So in both cases, the child is not learning. But if you provide some guidance to the child, and at the same time, you let him also make mistakes, because otherwise he wouldn't learn. I think that's the same kind of relationship between God and humanity. You know, humanity is now making a lot of mistakes, obviously, and we, we are aware of that. We see, what, where are we going? You know, we're going to hit the wall. If you look at climate change, this is just getting worse. Look at inequalities. I mean, there are so many indicators that are negative now. Look at the uh, state of uh, the the economy. It's very globalized, but also extremely volatile. You know, very risky. Can be can be very damaging. So, what are we doing? You know, but at the same time, we are also learning collectively, and we need to learn collectively and individually. And there is a lot of learning ongoing. That doesn't come much in the news. But there's a lot of learning, and I believe that. So at the same time, we are building our capacity. So that's this capacity building. Individuals are building their capacity to face a challenge. So it's going to be an enormous challenge now on the f for humanity and migration, climate change, and inequalities, population, uh, lack of resources. All these challenges, we'll have to solve them. If we are not more united, there's no way we can solve it. So this is somehow forcing us to be more united. This is one of the divine guidance to teach us that we need to be more united. Unity is not so easy. You need really to work hard for it. And, um, and if we want peace, we need more unity. But we need also justice. So we need to work on both. And what does it mean for you as, what does it mean as individual uh, justice, what does it mean uh, also in, in the family, what means justice, has to be defined and understood, and uh, not just on paper, but really in practice. And I think all these elements are important. What I understand, this doomsday is the end, the end of the world, and um, as I think there's different way to, uh, to um, understand it, but for me, uh, in the light of the Baha'i writing, I really understand it like uh, the, it's, it's the end of the world. It's the, the end of the world as we know it. And it's a birth of a new world. This new civ world civilization I was just talking about. So it's a birth. But the birth also means, you know, when you come out of the womb, you are leaving the womb. 
So in a way you're dying, you're not anymore, you know, the baby. Or you could take another analogy of the teenager who becomes an adult. You know, some in some cultures they make a ceremony that you're dying, you're, you're killing your childhood and you bury it. You are somehow, you know, so that would be the analogy. Humanity is now moving out of its childhood. So it's, it's the end, it's end of childhood. So some people are sad about that. They, they want to go back to the childhood. They don't want that new world, they're afraid. You know, but that's, that's, the, that's our destiny. So I really see it like that. And doomsday in a way, yes. I mean, it's also true in the sense that if we look at all these bad news, yeah, it is very doom and very gloomy. And many people are losing hope. So they say, okay, the prophecy is happening. Yes, it is. I believe so too. But then you have the birth of a new civilization at the same time. For those who want to see it. And another analogy, there's a birth. This is an analogy, you know, of the baby being born. But another interesting analogy is the one which I love as a plant scientist. You know, the seed growing out of the soil, of the mud. The seed coming out of the decomposed, decomposed uh, organic matter, which might smell bad, which look dirty. But then you have a seed coming out of that with beautiful leaves and trees growing up, taking up the energy of the sun, but feeding on the decomposing matter of the previous worlds. So this is the world we're living in. Yeah. So it's a birth. If you have that vision, I think you understand all this happening around. He said, you know, the old world order is collapsing. And I, I don't know those the quotes by heart, but you can find them in the Baha'i writings. That this is uh, referring to this. Uh, uh, it's a way also to find interpretation of this idea of doomsday. This is maybe the first time from the history of religion that it's so clearly outlined that that it's time now for humanity to unite, the whole humanity. With different Native American tribes and, and groups in uh, Mexico. and um, Yeah, a lot of the elders have said, like, they've kept their wisdom and their indigenous knowledge for so long, but many elders lately have said, now is the time to release this information we're not keeping it anymore in our little tight yeah, yeah, yeah. tribe and now it's time this is the time we got to share it and for other communities yeah right yeah yes yeah um that's interesting and i think that there is there are prophecies uh among the native americans also that uh that are related relating to the baha'i faith and m many there's a number in the u.s in canada of native americans also in the Americas, in Latin America, who became Baha'i because they, they saw that prophecy in the Baha'i writings. And they just confirm what they believed already. Yeah. So they recognize it and they, they, uh, they uh, relate to it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. They identify themselves also being a Baha'i. But they don't lose their identity. They still believe in their faith. You see, because it's because the Baha'i teaching is all-embracing faith, so it includes everyone. Those who, of course, accept, I mean, want to recognize it. It's a good question, I think, the question of identity. And uh, if I call myself a Baha'i, I, I don't want actually people to think that it's another faith, another division again, because that's not what I believe. So. Uh, I believe that, like I said, you know, that it's all embracing and it's all connected. So, um, uh, if if people ask me, what's your religion? Then I say I'm a Baha'i. But uh, if people ask me what I believe in, then I say I believe in all the teachings of all religion. But then the question is, of course, what are the teachings you're talking about? from which religion because uh, there are different interpretation from the holy writings and all ancient religion the teachings are uh, sometimes they has been corrupted or they have been changed or mis you know interpreted in different ways and sometimes which is uh, far away from the original teachings so these 
If you want, I relate to teachings that are beneficial for humanity and beneficial for the individual, for humanity, and for the whole world of creation. If it is, then I believe in it. But if it's not, then I will question it because I'm using my reasoning and my thinking to question these. And for me also belief, uh, faith should also, like I said before, should go hand in hand with questioning. I think it's completely allowed to question your faith. And I'm, I'm, I'm open to discuss questions about faith. So uh, someone can have a different belief and I'm really open to discuss it. And I think it's fine because, because what I'm saying about my face is my interpretation. Maybe another person will give another understanding. I don't have authority, you know, uh, as a Baha'i to say and you know, tell people how they should believe. Because what they see, they look at the writings themselves. And, uh, and that's how you understand. You connect yourself to the writings directly. This is also new in the Baha'i faith from other religion is that there's no clergy, there's no religious leader who is going to tell you what to believe in. But they will rather, uh, we are rather questioning each other and reflecting. Yeah. There has been so much division within uh, religion with different churches. If it's, if it's creating more division, it's not the purpose of religion again. You know, religion is supposed to unite. So, uh, how do we, do, I think also a good question is, how do we do it in practice? You know, and I think if we listen to each other, yeah, if we listen to each other, if we are willing to try to understand the others, I think we contribute to unity. Try to understand the other. And it's not easy because we uh, come from different backgrounds from different families and we have a different uh, we have a different experience so we have a different view on the same reality but if we focus on the right things together then it helps us focus and we have different understandings that's what we do uh, in Baha'i communities we do study circles where we but it's open to people from other any faith who can join or even someone who doesn't believe in God is open we look at the writings and look at question and reflect together in a, in a group, in a circle. And that helps also build unity. But what helps is also being in service to humanity together, like going and helping refugees or like uh, these friends were doing recently here, going and meeting the refugees and the children and playing with them. It's a service or helping someone move in, for example. <laughs> that, you know, when you do, when you go into action, it contributes to to strengthen friendship, but it's like true friendship because you do something together and you contribute for the betterment. So that's also strengthened the unity. This is a practical way to do it. Also to reflect, but in action and also reflect together and then do a planning together. And that's happening in smaller communities, in the neighborhood or in the village. Sometimes a simple conversation or just listening to someone, you know, gives them a bit of warmth and say, okay, someone maybe care for me, you know, I'm not alone. And that can make a difference, you know. Sometimes you can just give the courage that person that needed. Yeah, something can be a small thing. I read the writing in the morning and the evening, some, some quotes, some writings, and it helps also reflect on the, their meaning. And also there's a obligatory prayer that I usually do the small one, but if I have more time, I do the long one. There's a short, a long, or a middle-sized one. Yeah. Uh, this is for individually, but sometimes we have like prayer gatherings and we organize them in our place on a weekly and we invite friends like we had last Sunday. And, uh, but it can be also uh, visiting some other friends and then uh, saying a prayer together. Put some prayer books and people can read them and then sometimes we do a bit of music and uh, and then it's, it, it it's also very conducive. Uh, praying together also helps bring some more unity and strengthen the friendship. Exactly like I said before, focusing on, 
on a higher purpose and not just on material means also helps a lot it's a practical way really to do it it's uh, remembering also about the creator about our spiritual life that we're not just a uh, material being our life has a purpose and I think it reconnects it really gives you uh, strength and it's good f I can you know for myself but also others also helps relax and uh, I think uh, med meditation together with the prayer is also helping uh, refocusing and I think when you read the writing morning and evening it helps you plan for the day it helps you reflect on how the day was and helps you think about the next day but also help you maybe take a distance from the problems and the everyday uh, life problems that you realize that okay it maybe makes you nervous and angry but they're not so important at the end so I think it's it's really a practical way also to uh, yeah remove anxiety and uh, and stress that are just contingent you know they're not that dramatic but also reflecting on the sufferance of humanity is also a good way to help you know connect with other people you know the the exclusive way of defining faith and religion is said okay i'm a muslim you know then all those who are not muslim are non-believers you know and and he said i'm a christian all those who are not christian are non-believers i'm the one who tell them they're not believers if you ask them they said i'm a believer you know but i believe in you know muhammad i'm a muslim then so um, first of all i would ask them even if they say okay i don't believe in anything First of all, I'd say, you know, for me it's not possible. You have to believe in something. You cannot believe in anything, like in nothing. You know, what do you believe in? Nothing. Do you believe in, you know, this physical world and so on? That's the conversation. But in, I also believe in the eyes of God. Uh, every human being has a soul. And we're all created with the body and soul, with imperfection, of course, imperfections of the body. Some people are handicapped, but the soul is not, is not handicapped. It also has a, uh, cannot be divided. And so we all have this bounty to have a soul which can develop and grow. And people, some people don't want to acknowledge that, but I, this is what I believe. Even non-believers or atheists also have a soul and a purpose for this life and because at the end we're using words which are just our own way to try to understand a reality that is beyond us. So people don't like some words, they don't want to use it. They say, no, I don't believe in God. Because, because they don't like the word God. Or maybe for them God is something they have in, an idea of a man with a long beard sitting in the cloud. And they said, okay, I don't believe in that. Okay, fine. But maybe there is something you believe in. Some scientists they say they believe in the black hole, or they believe in uh, sorry in this physical uh, force of the universe. You know, s physicists are defining different forces of the universe, but now there's a tendency to understand that they all come from the same single force. What is that single force? Okay, they say oh, I just believe in that. Okay, fine. Maybe it's another definition of God. So it's a matter of wording. Abdul Baha explained, the son of Baha'u'llah explains that uh, there's no uh, hell as such. Hell is an absence of good or spiritual life. That would be the hell. Hell is, is more like a spiritual stage rather than, than a physical reality. So it's a bit like uh, having no food because we as humans, we need physical food as, as a physical being. We need, but we also need spiritual food as a spiritual being. So having no spiritual food, then uh, the soul having no access to this spiritual food will uh, maybe be sad, you know, that creates frustration and so on. And that could be the def a definition of hell in a way. Uh, it could even be in this, in this life. Hell is not necessarily a physical reality, it's a spiritual. So but we, because we don't know how to define it, then it's described in a way that... And of course, 
A question is, what are the good deeds and the bad deeds? What is the effect of bad deeds in this life on yourself? Is it beneficial? How can it be beneficial for me to do bad deeds? Uh, it has negative effect on myself, on other people, and on myself. But a good deed will have beneficial uh, uh, would be beneficial for me and also for other people. Like I said, I believe in humans. When I see in Baha'i communities, they're far from perfect, of course, and individuals are not perfect either. But you can feel that spirit of unity in, in the gathering. You can feel that spiritual energy. And people. there's such a diversity of people when you go to gathering. And uh, you connect very quickly with this. I mean, I, I connect quickly with them. And I feel that, you know, that brother and sisterhood, that, that feeling of we are part of the human family. So it's a reality for me. As I travel around the world and I can, you know, meet people from this. So it's a reality. It exists already. It's already there, you know. We can see it's possible. Humanity can be all connected. Just a matter of attitude, or how you perceive it. We, we need to remove our fears because we're always afraid. Who is that person? You know, what do you think about me and so on? The color or the, the way I dress and what is the background? We think too much. We don't connect immediately with the soul. Like children can do it. Children are so immediately, you know, they're connected. And then they build up, as you grow, you build up the prejudice. You put a distance. So yeah, prayer can help. Music is also amazing, very powerful. Singing together or listening to music that you love connects people. And also the arts can connect in different ways. Yeah. So yeah, that's, you can see it. and you, c you can look at documentary on that website for the, because this year was a bicentenary of the birth of the Bab. So it was 200 years. And so there were many celebrations around the world. You can find them on that website if you go to Baha'i.org. And there's videos, documentaries showing. This documentary was made on that purpose, showing Baha'i communities around the world. Mm -hmm. How do they express their faith in the community? And how that is, does it translate into a stronger community building process? And you can see this is actually maybe that would be the conclusion i don't know the the faith the importance of faith is that how does it translate into uh, into the peace building process basically that's that's where faith is important because otherwise if it's just it has to be combined with deeds prayer of course is a deed and making you know having friends is also a deed also that connects 